Hi, this is Andrea Hendricks, and I want to talk to you about how you can use your graphing calculator to assist you with these power and root functions. You should be able to evaluate functions correctly and also to graph those functions so that you can find key components to those graphs. So let's talk about if a function f of x is equal to 5 times x to the 3 over 2. To use a calculator to find f of 4, there's a couple ways you can do that. We could certainly plug in 5 times 4 raised to, and then the key part is in parentheses, we have to divide 3 by 2. Okay, so f of 4 is correctly evaluated to be 40. Let me just show you what happens if you forget those parentheses. If you said 5 times 4 raised to the 3 divided by 2, do you see the difference? Because then what this is doing is saying 4 to the third power, which is 64, multiplying that by 5 and then dividing that expression by 2. So order of operations is not known by the calculator unless you tell it. So you have to signify to the calculator that the power of 3 over 2 is all inside the exponent. And we do that by parentheses. So f of 4 is equal to 40 because we say 5 times 4 to the 3 halves and do that as 5 times 4 power key 3 divided by 2. Okay. Now another way you could do this is you could enter the expression or the function in the equation editor to do 5, your variable, raised to, and then in parentheses, 3 divided by 2, right? And then go to the table, my second graph, and if we scroll down to the value of 40, I'm sorry, 4, we see the output is 40. Now let's talk about graphing just to get some practice here. So if in our equation editor we wanted to graph the basic square root of x minus 2, we have to use the square root key above the x squared, right? And we graph in the standard window. And we knew that was the shape. It is a basic square root function shifted right two units. Now if we wanted to graph the opposite of the square root of 1 minus x, be careful to use a negative sign on the bottom, the opposite of the square root, and then in the parentheses, which automatically opens, we type in 1 minus the variable x in close parentheses and graph. Okay, so we see that we have a reflection taking place, actually two reflections, and a shifting to the right of 1. So the domain is from negative infinity to 1. Now what about the fifth root? To get to the fifth root, there's a couple ways you can do this. The fifth root, um, we have to, let me just show you real quickly here. If we go to the math menu, we see a cube root is built in and then we have an x root. So to use the x root key though, you first have to tell the calculator what root you're taking. So let me clear this out for a minute. So we would have to type in that we are taking the fifth root and then go to the math menu and choose option 5. Okay, So that is storing the 5 in to the x. And then we have to type in parentheses because it doesn't automatically open for this x root key of 3x plus 4. And then close parentheses. And now we can graph that. And we knew that the domain of that one would be all real numbers. Now, let me show you another way you can do that. Do you remember that the fifth root key means that expression raised to the one fifth power? So you could also type in your base of 3x plus 4 and raise it to, in parentheses, 1 divided by 5 and graph and you'll see that those two graphs coincide with one another. Okay, So you had to use either 5, math 5, and then do parentheses 3x plus 4, or you could do 3x plus 4 raised to the in parentheses 1 divided by 
buy for that. Now let's go back to the last example. The square root of 4 minus x squared, so what we would do there is second square root in parentheses, which is automatically done, 4 minus x squared, close parentheses, and then graph. And we see our semicircle there. Actually, this one's better viewed if you use a z decimal format. Okay, there you can see it a little bit better. And we can see clearly our domain is from negative 2 to 2, and you can check that by the table, right? Outside of positive 2 and negative 2, we get errors for those values of x. So that's another way you can confirm the domain of that function. Okay? So, um, just going to have a note there to graph that in this z decimal window. Okay, I think that should get you started on using the calculator for this. If you can think of anything I haven't covered, feel free to contact me and I'll be glad to include it. Um, but I think that's it for now, so have a great day. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.